You've probably noticed a bunch of articles that came out recently with headlines along the lines of what would happen if everyone in the US went vegan, with less than stellar conclusions that the journalists seem to relish delivering. So these articles were based on the research conducted by two individuals, both with meat industry affiliations, with vested interests in animal exploitation. And it comes on the heels of the announcement that 15,000 scientists have agreed that a shift toward mostly plant-based diets is one of the most effective steps towards sustainability. Sadly, but rather predictably, the headlines are favoring the research done by the two people that confirms an anti-vegan bias. What the research is saying is that if everyone went vegan overnight, greenhouse gas emissions would be reduced and a greater quantity of food would be available. But our nutrient needs wouldn't be met. Emissions wouldn't be lowered as much as people think. Demand for artificial fertilizer would rise without animal manure and plant byproducts would need to be burned without so-called livestock animals to feed them to. So we'll tackle all that in a minute. First of all, like I mentioned, they claim that they have no conflicts of interest and none of the articles mentioned their affiliations. The second issue is that the very premise of this study is a pointless and plausible hypothetical. It seems they're not just asking what would happen if every American went vegan, they're asking what would happen if every American changed our diet right now, overnight, but the agriculture industry didn't adjust accordingly. The researchers themselves told journalists, quote, our logic was to start at the extreme scenario. It's almost as though they got together and came up with a premise that would get them to the conclusion that they want. I mean, what would happen if every American sprouted a third arm overnight? How would our wardrobe needs be met by a clothing industry currently built around clothing two-armed people? The third issue is that the media coverage has distorted and sensationalized the research further. Unfortunately, most people don't notice that there's a lot of context missing and they sort of eat up these anti-vegan articles because they're looking for confirmation bias. And we're seeing this more and more as the exploding growth of the vegan movement makes it harder and harder for everyone to keep pretending that animal exploitation is nice, normal, and necessary. So let's clear up some of the core issues with this particular study and its media coverage. One, a shift to vegan diets requires a shift to vegan agriculture. That sounds like it should be obvious, yet their conclusions seem to be based on an overnight shift to vegan diets that just removes the animals and makes do with what's left with current crops and current production methods. Of course that wouldn't work initially. Quote, you can meet all of your nutrient requirements with a vegetarian diet, but the types of food that seem to do that we don't currently produce in sufficient quantities to make it a sustainable diet for the entire population. Keyword there is currently. She didn't say we can't, but that we don't currently produce them. And that's because our agriculture system is currently heavily weighted toward animal production. In the US, the vast majority of crops grown go to animal production. The vast majority of food subsidies go to animal production. The most consumed food in the US is hamburgers. Number two is hot dogs. The only top vegetable on the list of the 10 most consumed foods in the US is the potato in the form of chips and french fries. We are currently not set up to accommodate a country of vegans. Obviously, we would need to change the food system if we're going to change all our diets. Luckily, at least one voice of reason making this point tacked onto the end of a couple of them. We could yield a better nutrient profile if we do restructure the land use. Again, I mean, that's like a Captain Obvious thing, but yet it's really important to say it because no one seems to be getting that. Other researchers who have examined the impacts of a plant-based diet in the past have called it essential to recognize that plant-based diets would represent a large shift from the status quo accompanied by changes. Not acknowledging any of this is just a really sneaky thing to do. You can't use an antiquated model to dismiss an innovative concept. And they probably aren't even considering innovative vegan foods already available now like nutritious and protein-rich pea milk which could use perennial land to grow yellow peas and replace the entire dairy industry. They're being completely unimaginative throughout the whole study. Because this context is left out of most of the articles, the journalists assert faulty conclusions like cutting out animals would hurt Americans' diets and vegan doesn't necessarily mean green when the research didn't say that at all. They make it seem like veganism is fundamentally flawed and lacking. So you can feel good about never going vegan ever and continuing to support animal exploitation forever. It's ironic that they keep saying it's more complicated than vegans would like to hear when they're the ones oversimplifying a complex issue. Number two, 
the nutrients they say that we would need to be supplemented with if everyone went vegan overnight are currently being supplemented to farmed animals. The researchers say an agriculture system that's based on animal production without the animals wouldn't provide enough nutrients like calcium, vitamin A, or vitamin B12. Okay, so take a look at this chicken feed. It's supplemented with calcium, vitamin A, and vitamin B12, and a whole lot more. And this is organic chicken feed. Imagine how heavily feed given to factory farmed animals must be supplemented. In fact, apparently 90% of all B12 produced in the world goes into livestock feed. Again, they can't possibly be considering the fact that something like a single cup of pea milk has nearly half your daily value of calcium plus plenty of protein. Ah, protein. Men's Journal claims meat and animal products are more efficient at providing key nutritional elements to our diet, protein being the largest. They're actually the least efficient at this. Farming animals provides the smallest yield of protein. I repeat, smallest yield of protein. Yet even with this egregious waste of protein from farming animals, most Americans currently get twice as much protein as they need, but only half the fiber. Because guess what? Animal foods contain no fiber. So not only are farmed animals fed supplemented diets, meaning non-vegans are getting those nutrients through a middleman, Basically, everyone's diets are fortified now anyway. Iodized salt, folic acid enriched bread, vitamin A and D fortified cow's milk, etc. We already aren't meeting our nutrient needs without supplementation via fortification, vegan or not. Also, the researchers point out that our current diet with animals is already deficient of essential nutrients D, E, K, and choline. And this screenshot is directly from the study because none of the articles I saw mentioned this, despite having headlines about the alleged vegan nutrient deficiencies. So we supplement the feed of the animals we eat with the supplements they say we'll need if we stop eating those animals and act like that's a deal breaker when they're already supplementing our diet with those nutrients through a middleman. Honestly, the worst case scenario here is that we would all have to take supplements What's the big deal breaker there? Compared to the alternative of supporting a massive system of exploitation and slaughter with catastrophic environmental and ethical impacts? Three, choosing between manure or chemical fertilizers is a false dichotomy. Manure is seen as a benign and helpful thing. In reality, farmed animals produce far more fecal matter than is usable or safe. Nationwide, about 130 times more animal waste is produced than human waste. Roughly five tons for every U.S. citizen. These large volumes of waste threaten our water. So we have far more manure than can be used and absorbed. How anyone could argue that we shouldn't evolve beyond using animal shit for anything is beyond me. But actually farming without manure wouldn't even be anything new because it wasn't even done in North America before the colonists arrived because animals weren't farmed or used for agriculture. The Milpa system in Mesoamerica fed what was likely the densest population at the time, and it required no animal inputs, nor did it ever use draft animals. But the researchers assert that without manure, we would need more chemical fertilizer. Of course, right now, a staggering amount of chemical fertilizers in the US are used to grow livestock feed, but I digress. Veganic agriculture, which is exploding in popularity, but is another innovative thing that these researchers are pretending just doesn't exist, uses plant-derived compost. Speaking of compost, that brings me to point four, Vegetable waste can be used as compost. I know, groundbreaking concept, right? The researchers claim that emissions would result from having to burn tons of corn stalks, potato waste, and other plant byproducts that are currently fed to farmed animals. According to the National Corn Growers Association, 80% of the corn grown in the US is fed to farmed animals. Are they saying even without farmed animals, we would just keep growing that same massive amount of corn and just, I don't know, bathe in it and then burn it? So what they're saying is we take animals out of agriculture and change nothing else, we'll have mountains of animal feed left and not enough people food with the right nutrients left because we're currently using most of our crops as feed supplemented with those same nutrients to turn animals into food. Second, if composting magically didn't exist, like they're pretending it doesn't, acting like any damage done by burning these plant byproducts holds a candle to that done by the massive mountains of shit and urine currently being produced by farmed animals which pollute our water and emit potent greenhouse gases in far larger amounts is absurd. So in addition to those four points, it was pointed out in Science Magazine by an agricultural researcher, the team's estimate of reductions in greenhouse gas emissions may be low. But there's so many other factors that they could be considering. Scientific researchers in the past have found that globally we'll need to shift to diets that are 95% plant-based by 2050 just to have enough fresh water left. Did they consider our biosecurity needs, seeing that 80% of all antibiotics are currently fed to farmed animals, which is causing dangerous increasing antibiotic resistance, or that 70% of 
diseases are linked to animal agriculture? Are they considering the carbon sinks we gain when we free up land currently being used for animal production? Did they consider the beneficial impacts of no longer fishing and when runoff from animal agriculture is no longer the number one cause of ocean dead zones as it is now? What about the fact that animal agriculture is causing us to reach peak phosphorus? I mean, there's so many issues. It's so much more complex than they pretend it is. It is bitterly ironic that Chase Purdy says a vegan shift would be a public health disaster when there's pretty much no public health disaster currently greater than animal agriculture happening here and now. Between the waste, the pollution, the communicable diseases, the preventable illnesses, which other studies have said would dramatically decrease with a vegan shift and billions in healthcare costs would be saved. Veganism is not causing a public health disaster. Come on, dude, have some integrity. What garbage. Discouraging a vegan shift to masses of your readers at this time in history, when changes are so urgently needed to keep our planet inhabitable, just because you'll feel better about not changing is downright shameful. The pattern with studies and articles like these is that we're not getting the depth or context we need to have an honest conversation about why we really continue to parasitize, exploit, and slaughter animals in the year 2017. We don't do it because we would be nutrient deficient or starve. We don't do it because we would have to burn plant waste. And we don't do it because animal manure is as essential as oxygen. So why do we do it? Have you ever seriously considered why you support animal exploitation when you don't have to? Do you use articles like this to feel better about doing so? A better question to ask than what would happen if we all go vegan overnight is now that we have mountains of research as far as environment, ethics, and health, we know why we need to do it. A better question to be asked would be what are the accompanying changes to, to agriculture and to the way we think and, and the way we live that would need to be made? And who, what, where, when, and how can we make those changes? As the need for plant-based diets becomes more obvious, and as more people begin to have honest and sometimes uncomfortable conversations for the first time about animal exploitation, those with vested interests in continuing the status quo will continue to sow seeds of doubt and confusion regarding plant-based diets and veganism. Call them out, speak the truth, stand up and be counted as a vegan because we're on the right side of history. Thank you.